Welcome to the wonders of Oceania! The newest building in the Elm Hill City Zoo is finally finished! And I feel like that this might actually be my best work in Planet Zoo yet! The building is housing Tasmanian devils, quokas and kiwis from the newest Oceania pack. Today we'll have a tour where I will show you guys around the wonders of Oceania, but before we'll see every corner of that building up close, let me apply some finishing touches to the interior. So. Without further ado, let's do this! Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel! It is so nice to have you guys here for this a bit special episode of the Elm Hill City Zoo where we'll be finishing the newest building in the zoo, the Wonders of Oceania. So today we won't be actually adding any new animals, we will be finishing the interior of the, of the building uh, and then I will give you guys a tour around the whole building, the whole Wonders of Oceania, so we'll see uh, the enclosures for the Tasmanian Devils, Quokas, the Kiwis and some implied enclosures uh, up close so uh, you will be able to see everything in detail. Uh, so today we will firstly focus on building the interior part, like the inner part of the Tasmanian Devil habitat that we actually didn't build while adding the Tasmanian Devils to our zoo so it's time to give them some uh, like interior, some place to go to and some place to spend the winter. Then we'll focus on decorating the rest of the building inside. We will create like this little immersive experience for the guests while building a jungle with uh, uh, plants that are native to Oceania so uh, the guests can also re read something about the plants, they can learn something about them and also uh, there will be a juice or a mocktail bar in there like for some added tropical like vibes and so on and also a small implied exhibit for an another wonder from the Oceania, the Goliath stick insect. So yeah, there was quite a lot of work, there was quite a lot of figuring out how I want to do all that and this is one of the reasons why you guys had to wait for this episode a little bit longer. Uh, after building all that, after the speed build section, we'll have a tour. Uh, I haven't done a tour in Planet Zoo for such a long time so it will be actually very fun to show you guys around this building uh, to go with you and show you all the details up close and so on. So you can expect that in the second part of the video uh, and after that there will be also a quick cinematic tour around uh, this new building and also a couple of cinematic shots as always so this is what you can expect from this video. There's quite a lot of different parts of the video that's why I wanted to make the speed builds portion not too long so I cut out a lot of footage actually actually uh, to make to show you guys only the most important things not to make the video too long uh, but I am sure that you'll be able to figure out how I've built everything if you have any questions feel free to ask down in the comments uh, and I'll try to answer them all uh, so yeah the wonders of Oceania the building is finally finished I am so happy that it is actually finished because I am always happy when a uh, big project like this uh, comes to an end, it is so satisfying, especially uh, if I am so happy with my work like I am here uh, with this uh, with this building, with those enclosures and so on. Especially that uh, I'm so proud of myself, I don't mean to, <laughs> to sound to like, uh, I don't know, like I'm boasting or something, but I've built most of that without any reference pictures. Uh, the only reference that I had was uh, the uh, facade of the building that I actually took from the office building in France and I also did a copy a bit the, the entrance to the building so the concrete entrance is also taken from a zoo in the USA uh, so those are only two things that I copied sort of uh, but the rest the whole interior everything else is 
just my creation. So I am so, so proud because normally I am using a lot of reference pictures and this time I wanted to create something uh, my own. So it took a lot of planning. It took a lot of drawing things on <laughs> on the, the sheet of paper. Uh, and also it took a lot of trials. And that's why you guys had to wait a bit for this video because uh, I just simply was adding things, deleting, adding, deleting and so on because I just wanted to see what things will work, what things will look well. Uh, I also wanted to use a lot of the new pieces from the Oceania pack and you know without any reference picture where I see that already something on this picture works and it looks good, uh, I just had to come up with everything myself and so uh, there was a lot of you know trying the pieces like I've built for example the bar that you will see I think five times because I still wasn't like satisfied uh, with uh, how it looked and but the final product that you'll see here is I think the fifth attempt and that's why it took me a lot a long time to build uh, everything uh, the other thing is that uh, as I told you, I wanted to use a lot of the new pieces from the uh, from the Oceania pack, but uh, what I found quite challenging is that if you use too many of those pieces from those themed packs, it can end up looking sort of like very themed, like almost like a Disneyland ride or something inside of the building like this. Uh, and I didn't want to do, I didn't want to go there. I just still wanted to make it look like a very city zooish but with some decorations from the Oceania so you have this like theme and I wanted to find like this perfect balance between you know using more, more of those themed pieces but not going too overboard and not to make it look like an amusement park or simply a Disney world or anything like that uh, so that was also a struggle. Uh, what I did first was build the Tasmanian devil habitat using the same things that I did for the Quokas and for the uh, Kiwis. I just wanted to make the interior parts more cohesive with each other because we are simply in one building. What I did different was the background. I didn't want to cover the windows simply that there are in this building. Uh, I wanted to make it look like a same, same transparent, I think. There is this like world, transparent, right? Uh, so uh, I uh, used the new netting pieces from the Oceania pack and I used it as uh, material for the plants to grow on, like to crawl on or some so so on. And I used some, you know, crawling plants uh, that would, you know, over time overgrown those uh, netting pieces and so on. And I think it looks really, really cool in the end. After being done with the Tasmanian Devil indoor habitat, I uh, just outlined all the paths inside of this building with some rock walls and I built my own like uh, fences or railings for the guests using the again pieces from the Oceania pack like the netting and the driftwoods. After that I started to work on this little building inside of the big building so uh, you will see me creating like an entrance to uh, the dome, to the viewing dome that is inside of the uh, Tasmanian devil habitat. Uh, I just simply had to have this entrance somewhere and I decided to create like the doors for the guests that they will be able to go in there and somehow you know uh, go under the ground to uh, this dome that is in the in the Tasmanian devil enclosure. Because of the size of this huge like structure for this huge shell uh, entrance that the guests used to go to there, I just couldn't build the backstage part for for the Tasmanian Devils because I simply didn't have a place for it. Uh, I just did this time like an implied backstage so you have uh, like those doors for the keepers and for uh, the animals but they are closed so you cannot see inside and uh, you need to imagine this time that there is actually backstage but I still, I because of those doors, because of this entrance, I simply didn't have uh, have a place so I hope you guys will be able to forgive me. I know that every time we are doing the backstage areas for those animals but this time we'll have to use a bit of our imagination. Uh, what I did after that was uh, create a bar, create a little mocktail bar for our guests. I really wanted to have like a little shop in there uh, for them to be able to you know grab something for to drink and you know to enjoy their time in this uh, building in the jungle that we 
we'll create later and so on. And this idea also came from uh, the whole thing that Planet Zoo did for the release of the Oceania pack. So uh, the first live stream when the, uh, when the new DLC was actually teased to, was done with the mocktails. So every mocktail was representing a different animal. They also did some really cool TikToks with those uh, mocktails. They did several videos and so on. We also as YouTubers, as different content creators, got those gifts from Planet Zoo uh, to celebrate the release of the Oceania pack. And one of the gifts were was the menu with the recipe on how to create, like how to prepare those cocktails. So I, as a little tribute to that, I decided to build like a small mocktail bar. Uh, and uh, I actually included like a menu that I did uh, in Canva, uh, like a very quick design with the same uh, mocktails that Planet Zoo created for uh, for the release of this pack. So we have uh, the, sa the same exact names and we had the same exact ingredients that they used to uh, create those mocktails. I thought that this is such a cool like little detail to include in there. Uh, so I didn't include too much of creating the interior of the bar because it was a very cool like small space uh, and the camera movements were crazy. Uh, so I will show you all that in the tour uh, by the end of the video. Uh, I used really cool like refrigerators. Refrigerators. My god, English, please work for me today. <laughs> Uh, I downloaded from them from the workshop. They are super cool. There was a, a very popular bl blueprint some time ago uh, for, with this like whole kitchen, I don't know, stuff, appliances and so on. I'll of course put the link down in the description to this video. So if you want to download stuff like this, uh, you can. And also I will include all the, the list of the blueprints that I used here. This is not too much, but still I, uh, I decided to use some because they were simple too good. Uh, when it comes to this refrigerator, there inside there were cauliflowers and potatoes and this is not the things that you use to create mocktails. So I just had to, you know, uh, swap it for some fruits and uh, different things so it makes more sense. And when it comes to the blueprints, I know that I promise you guys that I will upload this uh, this building with the habitats to the workshop, but unfortunately it has too many pieces and the game doesn't allow me. Uh, there is this limit of, of 4,000 pieces that can use to be used in one blueprint and I have 6,500 in here. So I am not able to upload it to the workshop. What I think of doing, I actually didn't have time before releasing this video to do something like this, but maybe I will, uh, I will just, you know, release like a set of different you know smaller things like I don't know fences that I used here like small rock formations that I used here like piles of rocks like uh, pieces of foliage and so on uh, so you guys can use it in your own Zeus maybe that will be useful I don't know let me know down in the comments if you like to to have something like this on the workshop I can try I can just you know take those individual things <laughs> from this building and create one uh, big uh, like blueprint with those things as I told you in the intro, uh, I am pretty convinced that this actually might be one of my best creations in Planet Zoo. Uh, I don't know, I just, the interior of the building, it just works for me. I think it looks really realistic, like something that you will see in an actual zoo. Uh, so I am very happy about this. The outer egg enclosures are also really cool uh, and like, Basically working without any reference picture and creating something like this, I wasn't at this level some time ago is for sure. I just had to have some, you know, reference pictures. I just had to have some ideas, but here I just went for it and I created something like this. Uh, of course, again, I use the reference picture for the building, like for the this wooden facade and also for the entrance, but everything else was just my creation and I just love it. I must say that I just love this building and I really hope you guys will like it as well. It is such a cool addition to our Elm Hill City Zoo. I think that it suits the, to the zoo really well. Uh, of course, uh, when we'll have the tour, I will show you guys some like aerial Ariel shots? Ariel? The shots from the above, just simply <laughs> to show you guys how it suits to our zoo, where it is actually located, how good it looks in our zoo and simply how good it is. 
I swear that I am normally a modest person. <laughs> I don't know what happens to me, but uh, simply I just love this building and I just, I'm just so happy uh, about the, how it has turned out. I wish that it didn't take me so long to build, but I think that in the end it was worth it because it looks really good. Again, I am so modest today. <laughs> In a second, we'll also build a small implied exhibit. I just simply had this pub that was going from the entrance or from the exit straight like to the wall. Uh, it was slightly elevated over the jungle that we will create. Uh, and this is what I thought would look cool uh, because the guests will be able to go there and see uh, like the whole planted area a bit from above. Uh, but because of that, I had simply this, this path that didn't have any purpose. So I decided that it would be cool to have like uh, something at the end. Uh, at first, I thought about some educational billboards or so on. And then I thought, why not build an exhibit. Uh, I tried to put in there the normal exhibit box and add the giant borrowing cockroach because it is another insect from uh, the uh, Oceania that we have in the game but unfortunately the box was simply too big it didn't fit in there uh, so I had to improvise and build something by my own and I just was googling for some interesting insects that actually live in Oceania and I stumbled upon the Goliath stick insect, which is a huge stick insect that lives in Australia, I think. And we actually don't have a stick insect in Planet Zoo. I wish we had. Uh, we have a leaf insect, but we don't have a stick insect. Uh, and stick insects are really cool. Uh, they are very common at zoos. They are really, really common. Actually, when I was in San Diego Zoo, I was surprised how many different species of them they had. Uh, so it would be so cool, cool that to see uh, a stick insect, especially a huge one, just like a Goliath stick insect uh, in Planet Zoo. I started to talk about the billboards and the education uh, in here. I wanted to add a lot of those things. I actually wanted to add more of those things in here, but uh, I ended up filling the spaces. There's simply not much walls that I could use. Uh, and the ones that were there were just simply a bit more empty. I decided to fill in with different plants to make it look more like green and jungly. Uh, so I didn't have a lot of uh, places to put in the billboards. Uh, I used some billboards that I created for this, uh, especially for this building. I also created some billboards that Marco, who is my subscriber, who uh, like some time ago just proposed to me that he can do those billboards for me if uh, I want to. I of course said yes, because it is always an additional time to create those and he actually created some additional ones with some informations about the building. Uh, very cool ones, so I decided to include them in the entrance areas. Uh, and when it comes to buildings like this, I believe that in such a building there will be like a controlled environment. So the environment, I mean the temperature and the humidity would be controlled by zoo stuff to adjust it to the needs of the animals and plants that will grow in this building. Uh, thanks to this, you know, you are stepping basically to into the jungle. Uh, the habitats don't need to be like fully enclosed with the glass. They can be semi open, so you can actually have a really good, good look inside of them. Uh, you can and you can actually be with those really like uh, exotic plants. It is becoming more and more popular at zoos, so I really love those buildings when you can actually step inside like a almost real jungle with those exotic plants and this is something that I went for in here and I feel like if you are creating something like this and you want to build a realistic building very important thing is to remember about the airlock double doors or something like this because when the guests are stepping in and stepping out of the house of the building the heat and the you know and the humidity is just running away through the doors uh, and uh, the zoo needs to simply use more power, use more electricity and other means uh, to you know, uh, sustain the temperature on a certain level. So uh, building double doors for uh, like indoor jungles, for uh, 
stuff like that I feel like is really important. And also if you have some free, uh, some animals like roaming around like flying because I can simply imagine that we could have some uh, birds in here even flying like gubaras or other like lorikeets other you know Australian species if the birds will simply fly out from one doors uh, it won't be outside immediately there's still this second door that will prevent the the animal from escaping uh, so if you have those walkthrough exhibits you often have double doors and this is all when it comes to the speed build portion of this video i'll meet you guys in a second to give you a tour around the wonders of oceania i hope you are excited I am so excited to show you guys the finished wonders of Oceania. So we are here in front of our Tasmanian Devil Habitat. This is the first exhibit that we've built for this little series inside of the Elm Hill City Zoo series. Uh, we have the Tasmanian Devils in here. I was able to build this during the early access for, uh, for the new DLC, the Oceania pack. Uh, and I was building for my favorite animal from this pack because simply uh, Tasmanian Devils are my favorites. We can unpause the game for a second. I will do the majority of this tour pause uh, because when I am moving uh, like the camera, the game gets a little bit laggy simply because we are building in the middle of the map. There is a lot of things uh, around us and uh, it gets a little laggy sometimes and it's very not pleasant to watch uh, after that. So, uh, so yeah, this is their enclosure. Uh, they have this like little water section in here. They have like a little waterfall and a lot of plants. I just really wanted to make it look overgrown and uh, and just simply cool. And they have this in their enclosure. There's this viewing dome, and I will so show you the entrance to the viewing dome in a second. But before, let's talk about the positioning of this uh, house. So it is uh, next to the wildcat house that we've built some time ago. I still need to finish the interior for that, by the way. Uh, and do the other exhibits from the Australia Oceania. So we have the wallabies in here, as you guys can see there. <laughs> and in the back, we also have emus. So here is an emu. And next to it, we have the wombats in there. So uh, I think that placing it here totally made sense. I just love this facade. I love this idea for it. I think it came out so, so well. Uh, okay, so moving on, we have the entrances. So here is the uh, here I have the two entrances to our uh, to our building. But before I would talk more about that, let me just tell you quickly about those lumps because I just love them. I found them on the workshop. They are by a different YouTuber uh, named Thrive. Uh, and uh, I really love his work, he's really talented and he created those lumps and I love them so I'll be using them a lot uh, throughout the Elm Hill City Zoo because I think that they really suit to the zoo. Uh, okay, so here we have the outer uh, enclosure for the Quokas and I don't see any of them, maybe they are in... oh, there they are! Hello guys, they are so adorable, I just love them so much. Oh, you actually can see one uh, that is inside, so we'll probably see it in a second. We'll go into inside of the enclosure. Uh, so I just really love this habitat because of this uh, back wall that we have in there. Uh, I also love those ferns. Every time I see them, I'm just, I'm just happy that they added such a cool plan to the game. But let's talk more about the entrance. So we have our very cool logo uh, that I created using the font uh, from the workshop made by Christina. It is amazing. Uh, and uh, I actually was able to find the actual font and to use it for my billboards. Uh, so we have this little continuation. So we have like uh, different billboards, uh, like uh, in many places <laughs> in this in this building. So uh, in here we have like a quick information about the building uh, and also we have information that the building closes 30 minutes before the closing time of the zoo so the closing time may ba may basically vary do, like depending on the season and so on and so you often have that in zoos like uh, something is closing like several minutes or several like an hour or half hour before the closing of uh, of the zoo and also we have different uh, different billboards made by Marco with the uh, animal information and so on. Here I wanted to uh, give like a teaser for the guests of what they can expect if they will go inside of this building. So uh, they have like uh, simply s pictures of our animals. We have the, <laughs> the Quokka, we have the Tasmanian Devil and we have the Kiwi. 
Right now I need to be careful because I know that if I will do this wrong, we will be teleported. Okay, <laughs> we will be teleported to the roof. We didn't, so uh, it's perfect. Uh, here we have some information about the wonders of Oceania and we have some uh, rules F or, and regulations. If you guys would like to uh, read about this, you can pause in the video and read that. Okay. Let's be like careful one more time. Uh, okay, so on the left hand side, and when you enter this, we have the first sneak peek inside of the uh, of the Quokka uh, indoor habitat, and we also have things like uh, the fire extinguisher. We also have the emergency exit sign. Just something for added uh, realism. They are of course made by Shift C, uh, and I added it here. Also, the link will be down in the description. And on the right hand side, we have the new enclosure, uh, the new indoor enclosure for the Tasmanian Devils that we created in this episode. Uh, so we have slightly higher fences because they can simply bite. <laughs> so uh, I thought that it is important that the guests wouldn't be able to lean in the habitat, wouldn't be able to put their hands in there. So uh, I decided to make it slightly higher. And um, if we can actually go inside for a second, so, so I can show you uh, this detail is really cool with this like netting so that plants can grow on it. It doesn't block the, the windows, so it's just perfect. We have also this uh, like uh, cool like nature scene. I just really wanted to make it overgrown for uh, so the animals can hide in those like places and so on. And we have like an implied backstage. We don't have the backstage stuff because as I told you guys, we had to uh, come up with the way of hiding uh, the huge entrance to the viewing dome. Uh, so normally if the entrance wouldn't be there, I would be just using this part for the backstage. But now, right now we have to just simply imagine that the backstage is there. Uh, I hit those signs like um, in some cheeky places, just like here. I think it looks so cool. Uh, I previously had it like in there, but it was just so in your face that I just prefer this this uh, this way of hiding it. On the ceiling, we have different things. I just really wanted to make the ceiling look realistic and uh, also interesting. So. I created my own uh, like uh, lumps, uh, they actually are functioning. Uh, I also use the ventilation system uh, blueprints by Haribo. You can download it from the workshop and also I'll put the link down in the description. Uh, I added the sprinklers uh, like uh, there and in here everywhere uh, so that you know it's easier for the stuff to water the plants. We have the oldest system of sprinklers in here and I also added like some pipes and cables on the ceiling. Uh, this was just an uh, afterthought. I had this like empty space in here on the ceiling. It looked a bit weird, so I decided to add something and I really like it. I think it looks really realistic. Uh, okay, and in here what we also have uh, is uh, some info signs by, by, uh, of the Tasmanian Devil and also the entrance to the actual viewing dome. So let's see our Tasmanian Devils up close. Uh, so normally the guests will just go and enter like a tunnel or anything that will take them to, uh, to the viewing bubble, but of course we had to use... Okay, well maybe I'll show you. <laughs> we had to use this, so I just hid it here. Don't look at it, this is ugly, but... Uh, uh, you know, I had to do something uh, and I think it functions quite well. Also, in here we can get a little sneak peek inside of our bar, our Kiwi Mocktail Bar, as you guys can see in here. Uh, so we have this like uh, preparing station in here. Uh, I will show you the bar in a second. Okay, but moving on, uh, we have our indoor enclosure for the Quokka. We can actually see a Quokka in there doing some weird stuff. Uh, so this is their indoor enclosure with uh, this rock formation with uh, all those uh, like different plants and so on. They, they have a heat lamp in here uh, and this looks like that. And also we have a hidden sign in here that looks so, so cool. Uh, okay, but maybe let's right now step down to this cool, my favorite like part of this building. Maybe let's change the time a bit. So yeah, in here we have our indoor jungle. Uh, I just love this path with all those leaves and decals. It looks so good. So good. Uh, we have um, those uh, signs telling you basically what plants they are. Uh, they are here. Uh, basically, I try to use 
most of the plants are here are from uh, from Oceania, so um, it's all themed, it's all uh, you know on brand for Wonders of Oceania, and you have some information about the plants in here. We also have a sign by Lion in there, uh, and we have some theming. This is what I told you guys where, that I tried not to go to overboard with, uh, not to make it look like Disneyland. Uh, so uh, they are in those like slightly, like maybe under saturated colors, but I just love it. I think it looks like a, something like an ancient ruins or anything. Uh, it, and it suits so, so nice to, to this place. Uh, also, the railing are custom made from the new pieces. Uh, and yeah, let's right now talk about the bar. Um, because this is our new mocktail bar that, you know, I built being inspired by the uh, the mocktails from the reveal live stream of the Oceania pack. So they are actually there on the uh, on the menu. So we have the firecracker punch and so on and so on. Every one of them uh, is representing one animal from the Oceania pack. Uh, the, this is, for example, the firecracker punch is for the Tasmanian devil. The sunshine smile is for Quokka. Getaway glow is for the kiwi. The cerulean pebble is for the little penguin, and the citrus blossom is for the spectacled uh, fruit bat. Uh, and here we have the bar, the really cool bar. I love the fudge in here. I love that the fudge is right now recolorable, finally. Uh, I also love the detail of this bamboo in here. And I will show you the actual bar. Uh, I just need to teleport in there because <laughs> I know that the game just will, uh, you know, teleport me to the roof. So, uh, because I tried it already. So, uh, I will see you in a second. And just like that, we are inside of the bar. The mocktail bar, uh, the view from here is just amazing. Such a nice place to work at. Uh, so I added like a little plate with some, you know, apples with some carrots, just to make it look a bit more interesting. Here's like a little preparing section. Uh, we have like a cupboards in here. We have some apples. We have a chair for the employee. So she, when there are no not too many low clients people in this building. She can just chill in here. Uh, I added this cool detail of uh, this is actually the the box, the the apple box, and just you know tell, telling that they have fresh apples in here. I just thought that it is it is it will look nice. Uh, we have the uh, refrigerators that I told you guys uh, that I downloaded from the workshop. Uh, I had to like change the things inside because they had potatoes and cauliflowers and those are not the things that you use to make mocktails as far as I am concerned. Uh, we also have a sink to you know wash some dishes. We have the fire extinguisher and so on and using this door they can actually go outside to the backstage of this building. Uh, so I know that this is maybe not too detailed. Maybe Maybe we should have some more uh, like cupboards and stuff, but it simply was so small that I had to use the space that I had. Uh, and I used all of the space, so I didn't have the space for more cupboards and so on. Okay, so let's teleport outside of this little bar. I just love this view in here. It is so amazing. Like, uh, it looks like a I don't know, this perfect combination of a jungle, of a very like natural view and also uh, simply uh, something that you'll see in a normal zoo. I, I just, I just love it. Uh, okay, so continuing this way, uh, we can go in here. I will go there in a second. Uh, I simply didn't hide the, uh, the Kiwi sign as I did with those two because there was this like whole empty space and I wanted to fill it in. So. Uh, I decided to leave it and I think it looks cool. You can sort of see what you can expect like behind those curtains. Uh, right now we'll go in, in here. I created like this uh, cool like uh, decoration using the surfboards from the uh, Oceania pack. I also used those toppers from the, uh, from the roofs I think from this pack. Uh, and back in here I just want to really quickly change the lights a bit to make it look a bit more interesting. Uh, we have like an implied exhibit for the uh, Goliath stick insects that are coming from Australia. So uh, yeah, really cool, really like small implied exhibits with a lot of sticks, with a lot of uh, like plants for those insects to simply 
uh, you know, grab onto, climb on, and so on. Uh, the cool thing about this is that they have like the glass in here. So I actually added like an additional panel of glass so that uh, the light is simply just, you know, coming in there just so that they have this rise of, rise of sunshine. And because of that, the you have simply those rays in here and it looks amazing. Uh, from here, you have the best view for this, you know, little jungle with this uh, bar. It looks so good. Uh, just my favorite view inside of this building with this glass in here, with this whole structure. Uh, the path that is looking amazing with all those textures. Uh, the bar that looks really cool and all the beautiful, beautiful plants. Uh, okay, so let's move on. Uh, and now let's cheat a little bit because we need to change the time uh, to night because the Oceanian nights simply uh, the the uh, nocturnal section of this building looks best when <laughs> it's dark. Uh, I know that we have to do something like this because otherwise we'll be teleported, but okay. Uh, so in here we have the uh, exhibit for the common death adder, which is the uh, snake from the uh, from Oceania, from Australia, that is nocturnal. So I decided that it makes sense to add it here. I create like a uh, custom window for it that could be open. Uh, I don't know where the snakes are actually, and uh, they are hidden somewhere. Uh, I cannot. S oh, here we have one. Hello. <laughs> so yeah, it is looking at us. Uh, so here we have one of the snakes. Uh, here we have some info signs about the common death other. We have some info signs about the kiwis, and we also have the statues for the kiwis, so the guests can actually see uh, how big they are. They can touch them and so on. And in here we have the uh, nocturnal section or nocturnal habitat for the kiwis. As you guys can see, if we'll go inside, we'll actually have a better view. Uh, so the, we, I love this light that is shining on the uh, on this palm tree, creating like this really beautiful colors, reddish lights, and so on. Uh, the habitat is really cool. Uh, I, I, I will just. Uh, it is something that I wanted to create, and I simply did not. <laughs> and so I just love when my plants are just simply, you know, coming true in this game. Uh, and yeah, they are actually, uh, they are probably outside, but this is how the habitat looks simply. Uh, okay, so let's just simply walk out. We can change the day back, the time back to the day. Uh, oh my god, it's so bright. Uh, and let's go out of the building because we simply saw everything. There is an entrance to the uh, indoor part of the enclosures for the quokka. Uh, and I think that I told you everything. There are a lot of skylights for more lights. And there's this wonderful like glass uh, construction thing <laughs> in here that I really like. Uh, and yeah, let's go out uh, carefully. Uh, on this entrance or exit, there are just the same signs as you already saw. This is the other side of the Quokka habitat. And in here we have the outdoor enclosure for the kiwis. Uh, so uh, I know that it's not very realistic because they are uh, nocturnal animals, but I still wanted to give them uh, some place, you know, to go outside. Maybe during the, the the night, maybe during the dusk and dawn. It is not too realistic that they are actually out there right now. But what we can do, uh, we can unpause the game for a second so you can uh, see get them move you can hear them uh, here is like a, this forage uh, enrichment item uh, like hidden they can actually use that still uh, if you'll be careful with placing the rocks and so on so they can go to the center they will be able to use it uh, so this is their outdoor enclosure uh, i will just simply pause the game uh, once more so we have more fps uh, and i can change the time so we can see that better. I am so always so particular with the lighting in this game because I am simply building the habitats with, you know, the light set into specific time of the day and I feel that they look best uh, in that specific light. So if I'll change it, I just need to adjust it every time. Uh, so this is their outdoor enclosure. They have, they can enter the building in there. Uh, and it's again, very overgrown, very like lush with a lot of different plants so they can hide. Uh, so they can simply have some privacy and so on. 
uh, they are very out as you guys can see they're not hiding uh, but uh, yeah I really like it I also didn't forget to mention those fences those were actually uh, inspired by uh, Copenhagen Zoo one of the exhibits in there uh, okay so you saw all let's just simply go out of the explore mode so I can show you where this building is located uh, so as you guys can see it is located next to the wildcat house that is in here and in the back we have the dolls and bingos here's the small mammal house and uh, the uh, our australian or oceanian section so if you will zoom out uh, you will actually see the entire Elm Hill City Zoo. I know that a lot of you wanted to see this <laughs> in a whole like uh, in a whole form. So right now you can see it. And our uh, like uh, Oceanian house, Ocean uh, Wonders of Oceania, is located in here. Uh, here is the entrance, so it's not that far from the entrance. Uh, and yeah, I think it really suits well to this place. I think that the location is just perfect. Uh, and this is how it looks. So, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, our tour. I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you so much for so many views uh, under the episodes uh, from this mini series from building for the Tasmanian Devils, the Quokas and the Kiwis. And I hope you enjoyed finishing this building with me uh, as much as you enjoyed those videos. Uh, let me actually go to the scenic mode so to say my goodbyes oh it is so fast wait 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 okay oh now it looks perfect okay guys <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you want to see more builds like this from me uh, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and ring the bell if you want to be notified every time i upload a video like this uh, leave me a nice comment if you enjoyed the series if you liked the uh, the wonders of oceania what do you think about this project and what do you want to see next uh, and if you'd like to support the channel a little bit extra you can do it with the join button down below thank you guys so much for watching have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one bye guys